What's up everyone, this is Dan from Rebellious Noise. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Welcome to this new series where I'm gonna be going through England football squads. But it's gonna be England football squads with a difference. You see, I'm gonna start out with my top 11 players that have never been capped by England. Then I'm gonna pick my top players that have only won one cap, then two, three, and we're gonna see how far we can take this. The only rules of it are, I am not allowed to pick any player that is still eligible to play for England now. So I'm gonna be going through just a little bit of England history. I'm gonna start out with players that have never won a cap for England. The greatest players to never play for their country. So on this list, there were a few goalkeepers that I could choose from. You know, a notable mention has to go to Coventry City stalwart, Steve Grizovic. But ultimately I've gone for a man who played in a 19 year career more than 500 appearances and that man is Tony Coton. He was best known for his time at Oldham, Watford and Manchester City where he was the player of the year twice and even went for a brief spell at Man United. Tony Coton was the goalkeeping coach at Man United when I actually went to Old Trafford and I got his autograph and he was a very lovely gentleman. And Tony Coton makes it into this team, as I say, a 19 year career spanning more than 500 games, but he didn't play at all for England. You know, he was in the same kind of era, the Peter Shilton, David Seaman, that transitional period of England goalkeepers. And so Coton just never really got a look in. In front of Tony Coton, we're going with a back four. At right back is a man who played almost 400 appearances for Southampton. Now, he was their captain for a substantial amount of that time. It's a travesty that he didn't get a game for England. He was the captain in the era of the likes of Francis Benali, Matt Letissier, those kind of players that he played with week in, week out at Southampton. He was the captain in that transitional period from the Dell to St. Mary's. And that man is Jason Dodd. Now, Jason Dodd, as I say, he's played 400 games nearly for Southampton. He was a one club man. And the fact obviously that you had a young Gary Neville coming through for the England team really meant that he didn't really get, get that much of a look in. So Jason Dodd goes at right back in this team. On the opposite side to Jason Dodd, at left back, I'm gonna go with a bit of a utility player, a man who is comfortable playing at both left back and at left midfield. In this team though, he goes in at left back. And that man is Matty Taylor, a man with a magic wand of a left foot. A superb player with great performances in the Premier League for the likes of Portsmouth, Bolton, West Ham and Burnley. He was a grossly underrated player and I'm honestly, I was surprised looking through this list that Matty Taylor had never ever played for his country. And so for that reason alone, he gets into my team. You know, he will most likely be the player that's on the free kicks, the corners, all those kind of set pieces. Matty Taylor is your man. But who's he gonna be aiming for at those set pieces? As you know, the center halves normally will bomb up the pitch. The center back pairing for this team are two leaders of the game. We have Steve Bruce. Now, probably one of the most common names when these lists come out about who is the greatest centre-back to never play for England. Well, Steve Bruce is definitely one of them. And he does make this team. A man with over 300 games for Manchester United, he had a great partnership with Gary Pallister, but never ever had an England call-up. Well, it's not strictly true because England did offer him an appearance at the age of 34, but Bruce turned it down. He said that this was because he felt it was more a sympathy vote rather than him earning it on merit. And he didn't want a cap out of sympathy. A Bruce and Adams partnership for England could have been superb. Partnering Steve at centre back is the man who captains my team. A man who played over 800 times for one club. That man is West Ham's all-time leading appearance holder, and that is Billy Bonds. Billy Bonds, over 800 games for West Ham. The West Ham fans will say it's a travesty he never played for England. And you know what? 
England historically have proven that they can't win anything unless they have a West Ham player playing at centre half wearing the captain's armband. If I want this team to be successful, I need to go the exact same way. Therefore, Billy Bonds not only comes straight into this team, he gets the captain's armband. 800 appearances for one club. That is just an incredible achievement. And it's loyalty like that that you do not see in the modern game. So, the first of the midfielders is a man who is comfortable playing at both centre-back and in midfield. He started life out as a, as a defender, but he moved then into the midfield, and he moved into Everton's midfield, where he became part of the Holy Trinity, alongside Colin Harvey and Alan Ball. The latter you will know from being one of England's 1966 World Cup winning players. Alan Ball was capped 72 times for England. Colin Harvey was capped once, but Howard Kendall never was. But Howard, you are gonna get your England cap in this team. So there we go, Howard Kendall finally gets his England cap. But who are gonna be the three men that play in the center of the midfield in front of him? Well, we're gonna start off with Kevin Nolan. Kevin Nolan, a solid, dependable leader in the middle of the park. Now, what more do you want from a, a midfielder? Well, evidently other central midfielders, different ones. He was another of the midfielders that was in that era of Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard, and didn't get any opportunities whatsoever on the main stage for England. You know, and England could have done a hell of a lot worse than picking Kevin Nolan. And to go alongside Nolan, every team has to have a joker in the pack. And my joker in the pack comes in the form of Jimmy Bullard. Now, Jimmy Bullard joined up with the England team under Fabio Capello. Now, people that have seen interviews with Jimmy Bullard will know that he didn't refer to him as Fabio Capello. He actually referred to him as Postman Pat. And that's probably why he didn't get a game for England. But he was an all-round good player, actually. He was very funny, but he could play as well. He was a brilliant, brilliant set-piece specialist. He'd ping in goals from all over the field. How he never actually played for England, I will never know. And making up the midfield is a man who played 400 games in 15 years at Arsenal. And he was successful in those 15 years as well. You know, he played for and captained England's under 21 team as well. Played for the England B team, but never ever made the main squad for England. Yeah, he was called up for some squads, but he never made a single appearance. And that man is Paul Davis. You know, what can you say about Paul Davis? 400 appearances in 15 years for Arsenal. He won trophies at Arsenal. Unfortunately, just could not get in the England team. And so we now move on to the business end of the pitch, the strikers. We're going with two strikers who, well, <laughs> were very good at what they did. The first being Dalian Atkinson. In the late 80s and early 90s, he was one of the top strikers in England. In 1994, he was part of the Aston Villa team who beat Man United in the League Cup final. And that was partially down to a goal that he actually scored in that final. You know, he went on to score many goals for Aston Villa, but unfortunately, Dalian Atkinson never got an England call-up. And Dalian's partner up front is gonna be none other than Kevin Campbell. He actually has the distinct honor of being the highest goal scorer to never ever play for England. He had 148 goals in 499 appearances. That shows that he was a dependable goal scorer. Why did he never ever play for England? If you got that many goals, surely, surely you would make the team. But unfortunately it wasn't to be. And so Kevin Campbell is the final name on this team sheet. But then, with no caps come people that we think should have managed the England team. And it's down to two men. You know, I can't choose between them. Maybe you can. 
Brian Clough and Harry Redknapp. Probably for me the two best managers to never manage the England team. So there we have it guys, there is my England no cap wonders. Do you agree, do you disagree? Drop us a comment, drop us you know, message on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. You can find everything at rebnoise.com. Stay safe, hope you have a good one. Hope you enjoyed the video, see you soon.